Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Distributions and Recipes Initiative update. I hope you're having a great DrupalCon, and thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, so in this session, we're going to talk about the, uh, the developments and progress that has been made on this initiative since DrupalCon Pittsburgh 2023. Uh, okay, let's get into it. We've got plenty to talk about, so we're not going to waste any time here. Uh, today we're going to talk about, we're going to give you the big news. And we are going to give you a snapshot of, uh, of what recipes looks like right now by talking a little bit about the anatomy of a recipe and applying recipes. We're going to talk about what we're working on and then what could possibly go wrong, live demo. We're going to cook up, we're going to cook up a little Drupal instance using recipes. At least we're going to, we're going to give that a try, see what happens. Uh, before, before we dive into that, uh, we have to address the elephant in the room, which is who the heck are we and what have we done with Jim Birch? Uh, for those of you who uh, know or don't know, Jim Birch is the co-lead of the Distributions and Recipes Initiative, and he gave this session last year, and uh, he was supposed to give it this year as well. Uh, he couldn't be here, so he asked... Robert and I to give it. Uh, Robert and I are both senior, senior back-end engineers at Four Kitchens, and we've both been contributing in different ways to the Distributions and Recipes uh, initiative, and we are happy. Oh, where am I? <laughs> there I am. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, but yeah, we are happy to give uh, the update for Jim. Alrighty, hello guys. So let's just start with some big news. So the phase one of the roadmap is already completed. Now you can apply and create recipes really easily in Drupal. But more importantly, uh, an issue has been open to merge Drupal recipes into Drupal core. But guess what? Just last night, it's been merged into Drupal 10.3 and 11. So now, yeah, let's give it up for the community. Yeah, so now you don't have to add any patch into, into your Drupal if you're using 10.3 or 11. But what has the community been, has accomplished during the phase one? Well, now creating recipes is easier than ever. You just need a recipe gamble and that's it. In there you can list all the recipes, all, you can list the recipes, the modules, and things you want your recipe to install. You can also uh, import your own configuration. You can specify the configuration that you want to import in your recipe. Uh, I'm too close. Um, you can also um, make your recipe composable using other recipes. Uh, you can also make your recipes dynamic through the power of configuration, configuration actions API. And you can even import content. Uh, we're going to talk more about this later today. But I have some questions for you. Have any of you have created or dealt with Drupal profiles? Show of hands. Alrighty, how many of you have upgraded Drupal into a new version? Okay. How many of you love Drupal profiles? Yeah, that's what I expected. <laughs> Nobody likes Drupal profiles. Uh, if you had raised your hand, I wouldn't trust you. But the truth is, although the concept behind Drupal profiles is great, it's a little bit inflexible. For example, it looks in your site, they're kind of hard to keep updated, and it used to be the case, not anymore with 10.3, but they were really hard to remove from your site. That's why Drupal Recipes came to be. Let's hear more about them. Yes, so to lay the groundwork for talking about all of the developments that have been made, we're gonna talk, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about what a recipe is and the anatomy of a recipe. So, Oh, why? There we go. Um, yes, so a recipe is composed of uh, these elements. So it's a, an optional config folder, 
uh, in which you can, any of the config that you put in there will be imported after it's validated. Optional content folder, that any content files in there will be imported after they are validated. A composer.json file, and the recipe.yaml file, which is the sort of, the, it's the core of the recipe. It has all of the instructions on which recipes to include, what modules and themes to install, and what config should be imported or acted on uh, using the config actions API, which we'll talk about more. Composer JSON file, this is gonna look very familiar to you. We're just gonna point out a couple of things about it that you should set the type as Drupal recipe, uh, and that's because all of the recipes need to live in the same folder. Uh, in require, you can, uh, you can include any module, recipe, or theme dependencies. And then also, uh, you can suggest recipes that may be related to this recipe uh, that, us that users might want to apply, and they'll, they'll see their suggestion appear after the composer install has run. Recipe.yaml, this is the backbone of the recipe. So the only required, um, the only required um, uh, thing here is the name, uh, and then everything else is optional. So description, optional. The type is optional, and, but the type is used to group related Drupal recipes together. Uh, the same way that modules are grouped together in a UI. And, uh, and in the recipes section, you can list any recipes that you want to include with this recipe. And when the recipe runner runs, it will install all of those before this recipe is installed. In the install section, you can specify any modules or themes to install if they are not already, and uh, you can. It will know. It will know which are modules and which are themes, so you don't have to worry about um, uh, telling them apart uh, during the install. The, si the simple c configuration from the new mo modules will be imported. All right, and in the config import section, there's a lot of flexibility here to, uh, to bring in various parts of the config from any recipes that you're including. So if you want to bring in all of the uh, config from both the install and the optional folders in a, in a, um, in a module, you can, you can choose that by uh, using an asterisk or you can specify, uh, you can pick and choose which, uh, which items that you want to import. And if you don't include any uh, instructions for a module, it will import only the simple config. So any uh, config entities will not, be will not be imported. Config actions, we're gonna talk about the uh, config actions API in a minute, but here, we're just gonna talk about how to add them to a recipe. So an action has three parts. The, configure, the configuration entity ID, which in this case is at the bottom. System theme would be the config, config ID that we are acting on. And then after that, you list the action that you want to apply. In this case, it's simple config update, which is the most simple action and then you give arguments that, uh, that the action takes, and an action can include different types of arguments, and actions are also designed to be either singular or plural, so um, uh, for example, um, set permission or set permissions uh, are, are both actions that you can do to a role and, uh, but if it's plural, then you would pass it an array of permissions. And config actions API, no. Let's talk more about the config actions API. It is really a powerful uh, API that was introduced in recipes. Uh, it allows you to alter active configuration there, uh, th but there are two, two types of config actions. There are the config actions that can be applied to any configuration entity you want, but then there are the other ones that only, only work for those specific config entity types. We're gonna talk more about them. 
So in here, we have the globally applicable entity actions. Uh, for example, uh, as an example before, that Laura was explaining, we have the simple configuration update. Uh, this will allow you to update any configuration value in any config entity. And then we have the ensure exist that can be used to conditionally create a config entity, although it is not recommended to be used. Then we have the create config action, once again, that you can create a config entity, but this is also not recommended to be used. Um, then we have the set third-party settings that will allow you to add third-party setting values to config entities that can have third-party third settings. For example, nodes can have third-party settings for layout builder or for the scheduler. Then we have the config entity action that only works for a specific config entities. For example, the grant permissions will only work for the role config entity type and will allow you to grant permissions to a role. Then we have the add no types and add taxonomy vocabularies that will allow you to add bundles into your content moderation workflow, uh, but only for the workflow config entity type. Then we have add to all bundles that will only work for the field config entity type that will allow you to add fields to all the content types. And we also have the add item to toolbar that will only work for the editor config entity type. Yeah, so a feature that is new to recipes is the ab ability to add content. Uh, so now a uh, recipe can have a content direc uh, directory. All content in the directory will be created after the configuration is installed. And the functionality for this was taken from the default content module. Uh, but the, the part of it specifically that is now part of recipes is the part that imports the content. So if you, to, to generate the content, you still need to use the contributed default content module. To add content to a recipe, uh, you would export content as YAML from a Drupal project using the default content module, and you would add uh, the YAML files that it generates in the structure that it generates to the content folder, and then when the recipe is installed, uh, the content will be validated and imported. Right, let's talk about applying recipes. Applying recipes is super easy. You only have to run this command. This command lives on core and it's a part of the core scripts. And the only thing that you need is the recipe key, then you have to point to the, to the um, where your recipe is storage and the V flag for output more information. But let's talk about what happens when you apply a recipe. So when you apply a recipe, there is something called the recipe runner. These, these steps uh, are executed before applying, after, before applying the recipe. Uh, but before applying, before running the runner, um, there are some checks that happen. For example, first recipe is going to check that all the uh, recipes that you, that the recipe depends on exist that all the modules and themes and its dependencies exist on your Drupal site. If it doesn't exist, your recipe won't work. It won't be applied. So this is how the recipe runner goes. Pretty easy. First, it's going to install the, all the recipes that your recipe depends on, if any. And then it's going to install modules and themes. Once again, only simple configuration will be imported uh, when you install modules and themes. And all the dependencies of the modules will also be installed. And then we have the import configuration. In here, you can either, as Laura explained, you can either use an asterisk to import all the configuration, even the optional configuration will be imported, or you can ask specify which configuration uh, to only import config entities. Um, and then, after everything has been imported, recipe is going to validate that your configuration is correct. If it's not correct, if there is something wrong with that, your recipe won't be applied. Then we're going to apply the configuration, the configuration actions. Uh, in here, uh, you, you're just going to alter configuration. And then after altering the configuration, guess what? Once again, we are going to validate the configuration is correct. And after that, we just uh, finally import content. So what has the community been working on? And what are the plans for the future? Well, uh, there is something that the community wants to work on, it's our current issue, it's not done yet, that is called unpacking recipes. Uh, so let's say, as you, as, as you already uh, learned, recipes can have composer JSONs because it, could, it needs to install all their dependencies 
so for it to work, right? But what happens is it sets its own versions of the recipes, uh, of the dependencies, sorry. Um, it, will, it will be hard to update your site because the dependency will be locked. Or even if you, for example, remove a, your recipe from the, your composer JSON, the dependencies will also be removed, which will not work in your site. So that's why uh, unpacking recipes dependencies uh, solve this issue. Uh, what we want to do with unpacking recipes is to copy all the dependencies from the composer JSON of your recipe into your main composer JSON. Uh, that way, you can manage the dependencies yourself, and you wouldn't have any problem with updates, and it wouldn't lock your site. And it will also remove the recipe reference itself from there. So um, right now, we want that to work when a recipe is applied. So we want the recipe to be triggered, the recipe unpacking to be triggered uh, when the recipe is applied. Right now, uh, there is a Composer plugin, but it's not part of Core, and it works, uh, but that's not, the, that, that's not the one that we want to use. Then, Kelpic validation. That's why you never use AI for images. It does not, ha does not how to type. We do know how to type them. Um, so, it used to be the case that there was no real promise that your recipe will work uh, when you apply it. For example, it could ship with configuration, configuration that is invalid, or configuration could uh, conflict with other configuration in your site. Uh, that could blow up your site or leave a mess behind. That's why with configuration validation, now recipes validates the configuration. So if something is wrong with your configuration, and it will just want to apply the recipe. Um, Though, not all configuration is validatable. So only validatable configuration will be validated. Um, but what happens when the recipe doesn't apply? What happens to our site? Guess what? Uh, before applying a recipe, we, created, uh, we, we actually create a convict storage checkpoint, which will uh, create a backup of your active configuration. So if something fails, we'll just roll back to the configuration checkpoint and your site will be like it never, like that never happened. Then we wanted to make configuration entities, configuration actions more dynamic. Uh, when you use to create recipes and needed to apply a certain action to multiple bundles, you'd have to create multiple lines of the same action to the list of bundles, right? Uh, well, not, any, not anymore because now, for example, we had added the support for wildcards, uh, for example, in the first one, we're going to add the run per we are going to alter all the rules, and we're going to add the run permission access content. On the second example, uh, we are going to alter all the view displays of that of the node, and we're going to remove the component links, and then we can uh, change the settings on every instance of a field. But we also have other types of more dynamisms. Um, for example. We can grant bundle-specific permissions to a particular role for every bundle of a particular entity type. <clears throat> uh, in this example, we're, gonna, uh, we're going to grant to the media creator role all those permissions per every media type. Then we also have the, ab the ability to instantiate a field on all bundles of the storage target entity type. In this case, the field tag is going to be added into all the nodes. And now installing Zrubot with recipes is possible, and it's easier than ever. And you, you don't even need a, an install profile, which is great. Um, it's pretty easy to use. Once again, the script is on core. You only need to uh, run the script and specify the recipe that you want to install. And after that, it's done. Now, I'm pretty sure None of you have heard about Starshot. It is news for you, I know. <laughs> so uh, Starshot depends a lot on the phase two of the roadmap. For example, in the phase of the, ro uh, of the, phase two of the roadmap, uh, we're going to build an UI for applying recipes. We're going to start hosting recipes on Drupal org, and we're gonna add a discovery mechanism for uh, discovering recipes. We're gonna add more testing in Drupal core for, for recipes. We are going to try and add a, a, the unpacking feature into core, and we're going to ensure that recipes cannot be applied in parallel. Yeah, 
Yes, one thing that was finished, uh, this was maybe two months ago, uh, is that the standard, the standard install profile is now available as a set of recipes. And it, in fact, it is uh, available as one recipe, so you can install a site from the standard profile. Uh, but it gave us uh, a beautiful set of composable recipes that, uh, that we can use in different ways. And it's, it helped us, the, the process of creating the standard install profile helped us uh, solve some, some problems. So this, you can see this is a quote from, uh, from the documentation, the recipes documentation from before standard was converted. And it says, recipes are conceived as composable with any given recipe often requiring a chain of other recipes. But there's little practical sense as yet of just how this would work or of what recommended patterns might be. And so converting into standard gave us a lot of information about the patterns and um, config actions that would be needed and best practices of creating a set of recipes. What recipes make up standard the recipe? Uh, if you are creating a new set of recipes, uh, it's a great idea to, to go ahead and take a look at standard the recipe, which is now in core as of 10.3 and 11. Uh, and just take a look at everything that's available in there because there is a lot. And um, here's another quote from the documentation. If you install any given recipe from standard, you should end up with something new on your site that is ready to use. And that is the idea behind standard the recipe is that you can use any, uh, any of these recipes uh, in combination. And from that comes uh, the, uh, the best practice of uh, new sets of recipes should be built on core recipes. Again, from the documentation, pretty much every conceivable set of recipes should build on the recipes in core. Doing so is the best and easiest way to make sure your, integrate, your recipes integrate well with others. And, um, and you can require a core recipe into a new recipe simply by listing it in the recipe section of your uh, recipe.yaml. Another thing that's being worked on right now is converting umami into a set of recipes. The goal uh, is similar to converting stam standard, but uh, in practice, uh, it's different because umami is so much more specialized that it's expected to yield fewer building block recipes than standard did and will be less composable. It's, in it's intended to be a self-contained demo rather than a set of reusable parts. And you'll find that when you start building your own sets of recipes that you will have some that lend themselves to being very composable and some that are very sort of specific in what they do and are more going to be standalone uh, and, and won't, ha won't have so many recipes incorporated into them. Recipe maintainer and end user documentation. We wanted to call this out as something that's always being worked on. Uh, there is extensive documentation already, which lives in GitLab and uh, which is very worth checking out. There is a lot of work to be done still to get it ready for both maintainers and end users. And if you are interested in contributing to recipes, the documentation is a great place to start. All right. Yeah. What could go wrong? <laughs> But we're not so thrilled because we have a backup video if something goes wrong, so. <laughs> All right, so as you can see here, we have a site that has not been installed. So you know that I'm not lying. To actually install a site from scratch, it's pretty easy. As I mentioned, you only need to use uh, one uh, script and that's it. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to go to the, to the uh, root of your, of your site and then we're going to, to run um, the script. It is. This is a little too short for me. Oh, you're right. Um, 
quick assort because quick we sort. want quick assort, and then we're gonna go for the. Can you choose Sure. Is it better? More? What about now? Awesome. So we're gonna install the standard recipe. Um, so let's do it. Um, this, re this script tell, it's only supposed to be used for de demos uh, because the quickest start will create actually a SQLite database rather than you know the database you want to use. Yeah, it's done. Uh, let's get into it. Hey, look, it worked. Awesome. So now let's plug in. Woo. So as you can see, we logged in, and the usual standard profile just made us recipes. And here we have it. Um, but Let's do something really interesting. That, that's why we're here for it. Let's apply a recipe, right? Uh, so we created a recipe real quick. Okay, so this is the standard recipe, real quick. Uh, as you can see, it is composable. It is composed from all those. Uh, let's do her one. Is that better? Awesome. So it is a composed recipe. As you can see, we use all the recipes just to create the standard recipe. Then we install the modules we need. And in here, we import only the configuration we want. And then we apply some, some actions such as this, like the note settings we want it to use the use admin theme. Uh, but now let's install all the recipe that we created real quick, actually, because recipes are really easy to, be, to create. Um, this is the one. Just an admin theme. Uh, we, we're going to install Gen and use Gen for a better user experience. Uh, so let's apply it. So it is the same um, a script, but instead of quick start, we're going to add a recipe. We're going to go to. to and uh, custom and admin theme. And the, that flag is just for output more information. So as you can see, you can see where everything is installed. It says that we installed these three, four modules, the theme, and, uh, and everything else. But before, let's, if you don't clear catch, if you don't clear catch, <laughs> this is going to happen. So let's clear catch. And that's it. Now we have the theme. <laughs> but we, we didn't only create the theme or actually apply the theme. We also actually created content. Look, a node. Um, hi there. Um, yeah, what's pretty easy to use, if I show you real quick how is it, um, we just exported the YAML file. It's right here, as you can see. And the YAML file will output everything you need to create the content, all the dependencies and, and such. And that's it. And in here, we specify which um, modules we needed and themes, uh, which config entities we wanted, and then we just alter a lot of configuration. And uh, that's, how, um, that's how recipes work and how you can install Drupal from scratch doing recipe with recipes and how you can apply a recipe. But you also can, um, something that is going to be added in phase two is that you can actually select an installer if you want to use a recipe rather than a profile. And so that's going to be part of phase two. Join the initiative. 
So the recipe and distributions initiative needs you. Uh, ways that we can get involved. So we need recipe maintainer and end user, user documentation. Uh, I've already mentioned that. Uh, developers and testers are wanted. Um, the idea is that we have test coverage for everything that we're adding to, uh, to recipes and that is something that people can contribute as well. Uh, tests, automated tests. Recipes are wanted. We have a really great a, um, recipe book and, uh, and that's where people are contributing recipes and sets of recipes that we can all take a look at and get inspiration from. Uh, the Slack channel is distributions and recipes. So, uh, so you can come see us there and join us in Slack meetings. There are bi-weekly async Slack meetings. And also, um, we'll be at Contrib Day uh, tomorrow and Thursday. I know that Wim is gonna be there too. Wim Lears is one of, the, one of the main contributors on recipes. He's also been involved in config validation, which is very related. And uh, so there will be uh, some config validation contri contrib options as well as uh, recipes. Um, yeah. And special thanks to uh, the big contributors to uh, recipes. Um, there has been so much great work done over the past months. Uh, and, um, and yeah, and we want to thank Alex Pott, Wim Lears, Fan Proxima, Jim Birch, and all of the other people that have been um, major contributors to the project. So yeah, so we'll uh, we'll open it up to questions. Yes. Yes, you. Oh. Okay. That's okay. Yes, well, the default content module uh, will basically, if you, so it's a contributed module, default content. And so if you can include that on your site where you have content already, you can have that export the content as YAML files and then, uh, and then use those files in your recipe. Mm -hmm. Right now, that is currently an issue on Cori. Um, so right now, there there isn't we aren't using a matching name. So there is sometimes if there are two recipes with the same name, there are some issues there. Uh, so that is actually that is an issue open right now. It's active and it's being fixed. Is there any reason to use profiles with new sites? Um, well, <laughs> now don't. you can install sites without profiles. So if you don't have a need and you have already a recipe there, why not? Um, but let's hear what Winlear says. <laughs> Yeah. 
Wim, do you want to grab a microphone so that we, we can hear you on yeah. the... <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, yes. Um, so you mentioned extending recipes like the standard recipe. Mm -hmm. um, with that, is there a mechanism right now to be able to ex exclude or replace some of the, the sub-recipes or the composable parts of it if you wanted to deviate slightly, or would you have to overwrite the whole thing? The intent is, I guess the, the intent is definitely for you to be able to reuse parts of standard install profile recipe version. Um, yeah, the goal is to have an ecosystem of recipes that you can build uh, on top of, compose together. If we wouldn't be doing that, then it would be really silly to be building all this infrastructure. So, yeah. Is there a UI or plan for UI? Yes, that's part of phase two of the roadmap, yes. Yep. But until that time, um, we worked on uh, a few months ago, we worked on having validation for that YAML file so that if you make mistakes, because before that existed, it was like, yay, a bunch of YAML, but like, how do I know what's even in there, whether everything together makes sense? And so there already is pretty detailed validation that will tell you exactly what is wrong or missing. Um, so writing that YAML should not be kind of like a, uh, what is the expression? Like a, <laughs> you, you throw something and see what sticks. It's not like that. It's uh, it's really going to help you along the way in getting that YAML right. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're in a situation where you need updates, updates. So you have a managed set of sites that are always doing their thing, coming out, and you want to push out an update to 100 sites. So what is there? So what is the option for for updates in that sense? Or is it you on your own, or your separate profiles? Or Um, actually, that was a question that I saw on Slack. Uh, right now, there is no, it's not possible. Uh, so if you want to kind of actually apply it to other, other sites, you will have to create another recipe. But uh, I'm not sure if that's something that you want to include in the core. Uh, it's, it's a good question. Um, I am also new to the recipes initiative since uh, the end of last year. Um, my understanding is that the intent has always been for it not to deal with updates. Very explicitly not. But that doesn't mean it's truly impossible. You could create uh, a module that your recipe installs, and that module happens to provide an update path for all the things that you know are in there. So you can work around it. But I think it's a question that's going to be surfacing more and more. I think it would be really good if every one of you who wants to have that functionality, if you can articulate in an issue that you create in the recipes issue queue, what is your use case uh, exactly, and why um, do you really need this? Because collecting all of that information is going to really inform um, the direction that recipe takes, and may or may not convince the, the architect of the recipe system. the question because I can, I can pick it up. Is there any plans to support um, file generation or code modification with recipes? Is there any plan to support file generation and code modification? And code uh, modification? Uh, what do you mean by code modification? So do you mean changing lines of code in modules, or do you mean lines of code in a YAML, in a recipe YAML file? Um, in, in modules or in, in the project code, yeah. I would recommend using Composer, the Composer Patches plugin and modify code that way. Recipes is not, like, recipes will be able to get packaged up. Like, yeah. the intent is for, to, to, for us to eventually have Composer packages that contain recipes, and that way the entire ecosystem can grow, and there can be different places where recipes are coming from. Um, so that's where it's touching sort of on that space, but recipes do not have anything to do with code. They only say, I require this module to be installed, 
or this theme, these Drupal extensions, but it doesn't touch with touch code at all. It's really just this YAML file that you've seen on the screen, along with optionally default contents, but nothing else. Okay. No code. It got into core this morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, sort of touching on the question before about update paths, um, recipes do not provide update paths, intentionally so, um, but I think you're asking what if the recipe itself evolves uh, over time, more so than database updates maybe? But the thing is you can reapply a recipe and in principle that will update it, but if the things that the original recipe uh, uh, installed or configured, the config actions that were executed, if that was then subse subsequently modified by the user, the builder, the maintainer of the site, then it would detect that, yeah, things have changed. So it can't apply anymore. But uh, there are lots of open questions in that area. Recipes are not designed to um, constantly keep sites uh, in sync with a specific version. Recipes are designed to uh, apply once, forget, and it's absorbed by the site. There is no trace left of them. It's, it becomes part of the site, and there is no intent in the current architecture to provide update paths. Set and forget. Yes, set and forget. I'm not sure I really understand the question. Like that, you're saying, can a module uh, provide a recipe? Yeah, can a module project say it's still a provider? I mean, yeah, I think it could be included in a composer file. It, in principle, it can be included in anything, I yeah. think, right now. Um, it's just a directory that contains a recipe YAML file. So you could ship a billion recipes in a single module if you really want to. It's just that you would need to specify the path to the recipe. Um, it's a fair question though. Like basically, I think you're essentially asking how are recipes going to be distributed? Sort of, yeah. Well, the intent is that there would be a separate, just like today we have Drupal-module, Drupal-theme, and so on as package types in Composer. Um, there would be Drupal recipe package type in the future, but that doesn't exist yet. It does not support it by uh, Drupal.org yet. Uh, but the intent is to eventually have project browser surface the recipes that can be discovered and you would be able to apply recipes that way as well. Um, but none of those pieces exist yet. Yeah, those are two different questions. So, uh, yeah, yeah. For the fir for the first one, uh, the first question was the size of the how high of a level. Yeah. Oh yeah. So if you look at uh, standard the recipe, uh, it is quite granular the way that that is composed. And if your objective is to make uh, a set of recipes that is composable. Uh, it seems as though if you are, if you have a, a chunk of, uh, if you if you have uh, any part of a recipe that needs to be shared potentially, then uh, then you would want to make it granular. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, so but it but then again, there's the other sort of type of recipe that's more like umami specialized, and in that case you might not want to make it so composable. But it's, a, it's really tricky, and it's really subjective, and it depends on your needs, and it depends on your opinions. Um, 
but you can build very big recipes that really are not going to be easy to reuse, like umami eventually, for example. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of very specific decisions. And in the, for the standard install profile, we went back and forth. Um, and there are no hard and fixed rules. Um, it depends on, on the use case and the scenario. In the case of standard, uh, the intent is to provide, in every recipe, it should provide something additional that you can actually use. So for example, um, you saw on the screen full HTML format editor, basic HTML format editor. Like that's two config entities, a text editor and a text format that work together. Together they deliver something of value. And so that kind of makes sense conceptually, but you could argue that it should be each config entity separately, but like then you can end up with dozens and hundreds of recipes that need to work together. So it, it kind of depends on what you view as the unit of things that you're configuring together. And maybe that's just a text format and an editor. Maybe that's five fields on all content types. Maybe it's one field on one specific content type. So it, it can vary depending on the, the intent that you have. Okay, we have five minutes left. So we'll take uh, probably just one more question. I've been too out of recipes to correctly, fully, to fully correctly answer that with full confidence, but uh, it does do the sensible thing. That's what I would say off the top of my head. Uh, it will install every module listed in there if it's not already installed, just like Drush PM install would do. Um, it is going to respect the import section. Um, so for example, if you specify for module A, you specify star. That means it's going to import all the config entities in module A. But if they're already installed, then it's not going to do anything because all the config entities already exist. For module B, if you specify that b.foobar, only that config entity must be installed, then it's going to do that unless that's already installed. So it, it is, it's basically recipes are declarative. That's the point. And so for anything um, that has already happened, it's not going to change that. For, for anything that is different, it's going to make that change. Um, but yeah, I'm not satisfied with the answer myself, but uh, uh, I would need to read the code to verify. Okay, one more. That's the UI piece that you were referring to. Yeah. Um, can you repeat the question, sorry? Oh, uh, is there a plan to make any kind of a tool to help with creating custom recipes? Because a lot of, I, my problem is when I'm looking to make changes, I don't know where to look. Mm -hmm. Or it's very hard to yeah. find the settings I want to change to put them in config actions, for example. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there is documentation. And Right now it lives in GitLab and it's pretty great and it helps you a lot. But I think the best way to do so is going to Core and looking at how all the recipes are created because Core has, for example, this under recipe has a lot of recipes that were created just for those for standard. Uh, so that's a way to, to start. Um, there's still ongoing documentation um, but, and that could help you out. Yeah. So the, the one thing I would say to, that could help you today um, because what you said is all correct, but I think that underlying your question, you're also asking, okay, I know where to change the UI, but what does that look like in the YAML then? Like, what is the name of the config? What is the name of the, the bit in the config that I need to change? Some kind of tool to help with that. Yes, so that tool does not exist yet to help uh, with that. Exist, but but what you... Right, yeah, that's for phase two is, is the intent. But what you can do today is do a, an export of your config before you make changes in the UI, make your changes in the UI, export again, and diff the two. That diff is going to tell you exactly what the things are that you actually changed through the UI without you having to 
read all the code or go back from the form, figure out what thing in the config it's modifying. That is um, the only answer available today. So yeah, if you have any other questions, uh, come see us in the recipes and distribution Slack channel or and or come see us at uh, Contrib Day. <laughs>